Welcome back to another video in this YouTube exclusive series, Seven Figure Product Series. In this series, we are going behind the scenes to review and break down products and brands that are selling on Amazon that are generating over $1 million. This is the number one series and the number one channel if you are interested in starting or growing your very own brand. Today, we're gonna to be covering this small water fountain. Now, I actually originally ordered this for myself to put upstairs for my son because we have waterfalls all throughout the house. We have a waterfall outside on the pool I leave running. I just love the sound of water. There's a lot of tranquility involved with it. It helps me relax. I do a lot of meditating and reading, and I just love the sounds of water. I love water, so on and so forth. And I said, you know what? Let me take a look and see how much this product's actually generating. And I was actually blown away, and I'm sure you're gonna be blown away as well. So let's go ahead and dive into my computer, and we're gonna look at the metrics. My team has already went ahead and put together a product discovery report. And on this report, it's gonna show all of the details on how we found this product, how much the product is making, how you can find products like this, so on and so forth. So let's dive in. Okay, so here you can see that the average revenue is gonna be gross around $131,000 in this niche. Net on that's around 39,000. Now scrolling down and looking at the product summary, and by the way, if you want this actual product discovery report for this video and this product, as well as all the other products in seven figure product series, all you have to do is go to the website on the screen or down below at is sevenfigureproductseries.com. Now the averages for the search terms and search phrase water fountains indoor are generating around $4,400 in daily sales. That's at around 45 average units per day. Monthly sales are gonna be 131,000. Monthly units sold are a little bit over 1,300 and the average product cost is at around $25. Now when we scroll down and look at keywords, I like to look at the keywords in the main search terms to get a grasp around what I can project this product to sell, right? Like how much demand is for this actual product and this actual category. And the best way to do this is by looking at search terms or keywords. These are words that people are typing in and into Amazon when they're looking to buy these products. So you can see Fountain is the leader at a little bit over 10,000. You have Waterfall Fountain at 8,700, Water Fountain Indoors at 7,700, and the list goes down. And these are in chronological order from ascending to descending order. So what I like to look at is I like to look at the search volume. Are people searching for these products? How many people are searching for these products? And when you have a consistency of around five to 10,000 in terms of search volume across multiple different keywords, that's a good sign. Now, when you look at sponsored ASINs, this is actually gonna show you how many are sponsored and how many are actually promoting this actual keyword on Amazon's PPC or pay per click. Now going down to search volume, if you look over the last several years from January 2019 to January 2023, it looks like there was a spike around 20 to 21. I'm not sure what would cause that influx of fountain sales in 20 to 21. Maybe that's because it was at the height of the pandemic and a lot of people were doing a lot of shopping online, number one, and number two, a lot of people were hooking their homes up because they were spending so much more time. So I could be wrong, I could be right, but when you're looking at this data, one gem that I will give you is, I don't like to see volatility. So right there when I see that gap in the middle and it comes back down and it's stabilizing, because you see 2023 and 2019 are on the same volume. If you look at that horizontal graph, then 2021, you have that spike. I don't like to see that volatility because it shows inconsistency. We want to find products that are going to sell 24-7, 365 and generate the same amount of sales, just like an investment property. You want to buy an investment property, fix it up, get a tenant in there, and you want that thing to cash flow. It's the same premise with our products. However, when you're reading these charts, you want to have an open mind and you want to think, was there anything that happened in the economy or was there anything that happened globally that could play a factor in that inconsistency? So think about that and I'm more than willing to bet that's exactly what it was. Moving right along into research strategy. Now I told you that I actually ordered this product because I ordered it upstairs for my son's room. However, if you were to find this product, we reverse engineered how to find this product. Here goes the search criteria. The average monthly unit sold would be a thousand. The minimum average monthly price would be around $85. We would exclude top brands and we would also look in the category home and kitchen. So these are some of the parameters and search criteria that you could use to find a product similar to this. Now, when we were doing due diligence and actually reviewing this, there's several different fountain types, one of them being a fountain for pets, like cats and small dogs, and this is a fountain that they could drink from. So you put it on the floor next to their food and it has water that comes out and they drink from it, right? Some of them have filters, some of them have apps, and I don't wanna go down a rabbit hole, but I do wanna give you a bar really quick or a gym when you're doing product research and you're finding products, look at other semantically relevant to the category 
but different niches, right? Because it's still a water fountain, but instead of being an aesthetic water fountain where it looks cool and it sounds cool in your house, it has a practice for actually for animals, right? So think about that as well because I never even knew that product existed and now I'm looking into it for my dog, right? So think about that because when I was doing the quick research, that product's actually doing pretty decent itself. All right, so product selection for the brand Hometics. Here you can see the average revenue over 133,000 reviews. They have just under 39,000 reviews, so they're absolutely crushing it. And they've been selling this product for a while. Rank their number three on the first page. The selling price averages around $25 and the product weight is one pound. So looking at this product, this fits the old shoebox method, right? This product is less than one pound. It can fit in a shoebox. It's gonna be cheap in terms of fulfillment and in terms of shipping and it packs a big profit. Now down below again, guys, you can see all the related links from Amazon product page, product image, the Jungle Scout extension. It'll pop you right up the extension so you can see all the different water fountains I was talking about and the different numbers that they're doing. You can see keywords, search volume, as well as the link to this PDF. Again, that is my gift to you for being a viewer and watching Seven Figure Product Series. All you gotta do is go to www.sevenfigureproductseries.com or click the link down below. Now, if you've made it this far and you've gotten any value whatsoever, go ahead and do me a quick favor, smash that like button and drop a subscribe if you are not already subscribed. Turn on notification bells because every single Friday we are releasing a new episode of Seven Figure Product Series where we are diving behind the scenes and looking at these products and these brands that are generating over seven figures. Also, if you're starting and not already an Amazon seller and you don't have access to Jungle Scout, you can go ahead and use our link here for the channel, which is discountonjunglescout.com to go ahead and get a discount on Jungle Scout so you can start finding your first or your next product. Now, with that being said, let's go ahead and dive over to the listing and let's analyze and critique the listing. Let's see what they got going on. And last but far from least, my favorite, we'll actually open the packaging and we'll see what's behind it and we'll look at the quality of the product. All right, so here we are on the listing and you can see it's pretty basic. To be honest, nothing crazy with the pictures. The main, main image takes up a majority of the space. Here they have some pictures that talk about the benefits, the details, the uses, a little bit about the features. Pretty simple. Here goes a lifestyle lifestyle image. Here goes a dimension image where it shows, the, shows it actually in your space, shows the dimensions, the size, so you can get a feel for what it would look like in your home. And then they have a video. Now, in order to have access to these videos, all you have to do is make sure that you're brand registered with Amazon, which is free. In order to become a part of brand registry and unlike all these additional features, all you have to do is have a registered trademark or go through an Amazon preferred partner on platform and show that your trademark is pending. Okay, scrolling right down, they've got the price right. For those of you who have been following the channel for a while or if you watched another one of these episodes, we never wanna end our price in nine, always end it in an odd number. They've got that right. Looks like they're running a lightning deal or a daily deal. So right now you see that the price is slashed it has this big red box that says lowest price in 30 days. This is something that they're definitely gonna do to go ahead and spike the sales, right? Now, if you wanna track the sales and the sales history and the deal history, you can use the free extension from Keepo, which is what I have right here. And you can see the different prices along with the buy boxes, so on and so forth, right? Scrolling down, you can see the A plus content. Again, this is another benefit of being brand registered. Again, this is a perfect example that perfectionism leads to procrastination. And sometimes perfectionism can actually hinder conversions, right? Like this is a basic listing. This A plus content is basic but they're number three on the first page with tens of thousands of reviews, making over seven figures per year, right? Here you can see they got 38,000 plus reviews and they're number one in the subcategory for tabletop fountains. Now that we've looked at the numbers, we've looked at the listing, now it's time to look at the actual packaging itself, the product itself, and this is my favorite part because we get to see what is behind the packaging. Are they doing marketing? What is their marketing strategy? What is the quality of the product? How are they packaging the product? What does the product packaging look like? And these are all my favorite parts because one of my favorite parts of building these businesses and building these brands are product development. So let's go ahead and do that together. All right, so right off the back, you can see that there's a sleeve on here and the sleeve on the box has a picture of the product, has the name on here, the brand, that's pretty much it. On the back here, you can see it has the model number, it has the UPC, it has the address, the website, customer support email, made in China, of course, so on and so forth. Now these sleeves are quick, easy ways. You can see that this is just a blue corrugated box. So more than likely, when you get into running with a lot of numbers, right? When you're pumping out a lot of products, 
You want to identify ways to increase your bottom line without decreasing the quality of the product. So how can I make the quality perception and feel of the product be superior and really be quality while driving down the price? So chances are that versus this package being all printed with this, they were able to, to create this sleeve and the sleeve was able to save them some money. That may be the reason why they did the sleeve. Again, I could be wrong, but that does make sense. Now getting the sleeve off the desk here, you can see that they have a piece of tape that is holding this ear right here. I'm gonna go ahead and rip that open. Now, believe it or not, you guys hear me talking about crush factor a lot here. You can see that the crush factor is very poor on this box. I'm easily able to just demolish this box with one hand, right? So you have to think about that. This is a higher ticket product and this is an electronic product and I'm not sure how fragile it is, but if it was fragile, this wouldn't be doing too well, right? So you can think about the boxing again, they probably are trying to save some money because it doesn't ship in that box. Amazon is gonna place that in its own box and the corrugated thickness on the Amazon boxes are a little bit thicker and they usually do put padding inside of the boxes if your product is a little bit more on the delicate side, right? So other than that, they have the main fountain looks like inside this box, which is holding the different components. Get these out the way. You can see these little inserts. Inserts are a good way to protect products and to also make the packaging look a little bit better when you open them and they're inside their little slots, makes things look a little bit better. Right off the gate, right off the gate, I seen like a piece of plastic fell off or broke. I'm not sure what that's, what that's from. I noticed that a majority of this product is plastic, which as a consumer who actually purchased this for themselves, I'm actually a little bit upset. I would think that it would have been like an aluminum or a metal or something like that. The entire fountain actually is plastic, which again, they probably did for cost cutting purposes, right? To increase their margin. You can also see here, I don't know if the camera can pick it up or not, but the light is actually not centered, lights off centered. So. The quality is not crazy. And the reason why I hit on this, it's not slashing this company, right? I'm not sitting here slashing this company because this company's crushing it. This company's making seven figures. It's a good product. They have tens of thousands of five-star reviews, but so many people that I deal with that I consult on a daily basis with the AMZ formula and my consulting company is, they're trying to make that first product perfect. Perfectionism leads to procrastination. Your first product will never be perfect. And if you wait for your first product launch to be perfect, you will wait so long that you will lose significant amounts of money and opportunity. First to market, first to dollar. And what I highly suggest is you do your due diligence as fast as possible and you get the product to the marketplace through a micro launch test batch and you start implementing adjustments and refinements with every single order. There is no rule book or nothing, no rules and regulations with Amazon or with building a brand or a business in general that says that the way you launch it is the way it has to stay. So constantly be innovating, constantly be improving, but don't do it to the fact where you fall victim to analysis paralysis and then this perfectionism loop where it takes you a year to launch a product when it could have took you 30 days for product development and then to start manufacturing, okay? Another tip is when you're looking at launching these products, make sure that you're, you're ordering two or three of the competitors on the first page that are making all the money because you may be overthinking and overanalyzing and getting in your head about how the product quality should be, how the product specification should be. You'll actually be able to see that you may be in your head and that you may be going down this rabbit hole of constantly improving when you really don't need that, right? Now they have the little uh, sections that are gonna go on here to hold the water. And I didn't, look at the, uh, I didn't look at the instruction manual, so I'm not sure exactly how to put this thing together. So I'm just gonna guess that they have these little inserts here. There goes one. Yeah, and again, I didn't, I didn't look at the instruction manual on this, but they have inserts, pretty easy to snap in, pretty self-explanatory. And then you have the pump here, the pump down at the bottom, and you have the AC adapter for the pump. And this is what's actually gonna pump the water from top to bottom and circulate the water. It looks like a simple on and off switch decent amount of length on cord. Whenever you're doing something in the electronic space, you always want to think about the cord space, right? Because there's nothing worse than having a product with a short cord space. And then they have the rock inserts. The rock inserts actually go in here and on top. And there you have it, pretty simple. Now here you have the insert and the inserts, all the inserts are actually in a bag. So let's go ahead and open this up. And it looks like we have a few pieces of literature here. One is a dear user insert. The other one is talking about the pump, how to keep the pump quiet and how to do preventative maintenance on the pump. The other one says important notice, it says due to the imperfect edges, which are uh, inherent to our natural stone foundations, water may splash outside the base of the unit. Therefore, we strongly recommend that you place your fountain on a waterproof surface. So this is more about safety reasons, right? So they have a disclosure, 
they have a deer user insert, and then they have some instructions on the pump. And then it looks like they have the actual manual. It looks like the manual, they have it in a few different languages. They have their email, they have their shipping address, uh, which is out of Michigan. They have their email and they have their phone number. Pretty simple, standard operating procedures, troubleshooting, assembly. The assembly is horrible. They could definitely have higher resolution um, images and better instructions. I'm big on these. I'm always, it's my pet, pet peeve for having bad instructions or bad uh, manuals. But again, this stuff doesn't make money, right? This is the micro adjustments and optimizations that you're gonna make. So essentially, there's zero marketing whatsoever. We have a disclosure about the imperfect edges and water spilling out, and then we have two different things talking about the pump. So one thing that you can take from this, if you're getting some reviews that are bad on your product, and you've went to product development, you've went to the manufacturing, you've talked with an engineer, or you've talked with your manufacturer to try to eliminate these issues, but it's just inevitable. In this case, it's the pump itself, sometimes they can be because of upkeep, management, or how that the uh, consumer or client is using the product. It is always smart to have some type of education to combat that or mitigate those issues so that you don't have as many negative reviews. So that was smart and this is what they did and that's something that you can learn from as well. So there you guys have it, another episode of 7 Figure Product Series exclusively here on YouTube. And this is the number one channel with the largest library, nearly 500 videos showing you how to increase your income, impact, and influence, start, grow, and sell your very own brand. If you got any value whatsoever and you're still here and you haven't, please smash that like button, smash the subscribe button, click the notification bell next to it, that way you're notified every single Friday when we drop a new series of Seven Figure Product Series. By the way, here goes some more videos of Seven Figure Product Series, and remember, you're only one product away.